Good morning, good morning, everyone. This is um, Diversity in Dentistry. I'm Dr. Jared Williams. And today we have a special guest all the way from Florida. And so I just want to say today is September, October 10th. October 10th. I'm, I'm super excited. I'm, I'm already bumbling over words already. It's October 10th, 2021. And today is our accountability call. We have none other than Dr. Joshua Golden. Welcome, Joshua. How are you, Dr. Golden? I'm sorry. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm excited to be here. I'm, I'm ecstatic, actually. I mm. love everything this organization does. Um, it is much needed in this universe. So I'm just happy to be a friend, a family member. We got to do more together because I love everything about you guys. So thank you for having me on. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's an honor. You know, I would start in how we met. But I think I'm going to hold that for a part two. <laughs> oh, oh, you know what? Save it to the end. We got to give them a teaser. Okay, we'll save okay. it to the all end. Right, and right, then right. everybody get a good laugh. Right? <laughs> all right. Well, um, this pie, I mean, this show, um, what we do is that we come on here and we talk about how we have diversified dentistry. And um, I wanted to bring on Dr. Golden specifically this week because how we met, uh, we'll share that to the end if we have time. Um, but we have a wonderful show today because I want you to um, get some insight from what Dr. Golden has experienced and what he's going to be bringing um, to his platform just to diversify dentistry with his, his own field and also us partnering up um, now and in the future about doing such. And so once again, Dr. Golden, I appreciate your time. I thank you for um, getting up at this good old early morning and coming on. Um, so with, for, without further ado, tell us about yourself, kind of give us some insight for who you are and how you started it. Take us on. All right, so I'm give you guys the little Spark Notes version. I don't even know if Spark Notes is a thing anymore. I feel old, uh, but anyway, my name is Dr. Joshua Golden. I am the owner of West Sunrise Dentistry here in South Florida. So if you've ever been to Miami, all you need to do is drive a couple miles north um, and boom, you'll be right at my office. Um, I was born and raised in the county of Dade, which is Miami, Florida, Liberty City, uh, inner city kid, a uh, single parent home. My mom raised me. Um, I went to all the local schools. I didn't go to anything fancy. I went to the schools that were in the neighborhood. Um, my high school was Miami Northwestern, which is a pretty well-known school for like football and things of that nature not an academic hub we have some programs but most people know us for football um so i basically graduated near the top of my class in high school and i wanted to try something different if i always was in the local schools i wanted to go see what a quote unquote big school was like so i uh, went to florida state university uh, at florida state i got involved with the pre-health organization called maps uh, which is very very vital for my journey and allowed me to see what the health field was like um, at that point florida state had just opened up a medical school and they were pushing people into medicine like it was nobody's business i think they got a cut for every student that went to that medical school <laughs> so uh, naturally they saw me, they were trying to pull me over. Um, but I did this summer program because of MAPS. Um, it's called SMDEP, life-changing. Summer medical and dental program at Columbia University. And at this program, I literally had an opportunity to learn about you know, the medical side and the dental side, but technically I was registered for the medical side. And the associate dean, Dr. Dennis Mitchell saw that and he was like, what is this medical student doing over here on our side um, and hanging out with our students so much? Let me get to know him. And he got to know me. And towards the end of the program, this guy literally spent an hour, hour and a half of his time. Actually, I think it was probably two hours. We were in his office and he was trying to convince me that with my personality, I would be an asset to the dental field. And, you know, in college, we're stubborn. Once we start on a road, we do not want to start back. So I was listening to him and I saw how interested I was in, you know, the dental aspect of the program. But I'm like, you know what? I don't want to ruffle any feathers when I get back to Florida State. I might just stay my route. Or better yet, how about this? I'm going to shadow an MD in the morning and I'll shadow a dentist in the afternoon. And after six months, I have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. I felt that was fair. It was, a you know, a good 
uh, compromise and I did it. And without a doubt, it only took one month. I knew it was dentistry, but I completed the task. I did the other five months. But whenever I went into that dental office, when I was shadowing, it was fantastic. It was that feeling that I got when I was at the program. Um, I was able to see the doctor uh, communicate with the patient. Bedside manner is one of my strong points. So I got to see the uh, patient doctor interaction. I got to see the dentist use his hands to uh, create magic. And the overall atmosphere was so much better. Um, because when I went to the hospital and it was early in the morning, uh, when I used to talk to the docs, they weren't always the happiest. Um, and it was because of, you know, insurance and, you know, being overworked, quality of life. And they told me this. they were like, if they had to do it again, quite a few of them told me if they had to do it again, they would probably switch over and do something different. So they told me to take that decision very serious because this was going to be something that was going to, you know, be for the rest of my life yeah. and you got to go through a lot to get into medical and dental school so you want to be happy once you get to the other end all right so made that decision it was late in my junior year and then um i had to go ahead and kind of pause a little bit because i was too late for the application process and so i ended up going to do my master's in dental public health and also assisting just to again make sure 100 percent that I really wanted to do this. And after that, got into USC and the rest is history. So try to summarize that as quickly as possible. So, no, no, guys, no, no. Just story. <laughs> so just to clarify, is MAPS a medical side and SMDP is a dental? Um, no, MAPS was a pre-health organization when I oh, joined. Uh -huh. And as I was in the program, they were switching over to being um, a pre-medical they were trying to be primarily medical because now they were housed in the medical school um and then smdep that program was a summer medical and dental program oh. it's still around now but i don't know i forgot what the acronym is now but if you type in smdep um in google it'll pop up and it'll give you the new acronym i would tell any student who um can apply it's an amazing program. You get to go to a different city and um, you have an opportunity to learn from different professors about a field that you want to go into. Is that paid or not paid? Uh, oh, paid? Um, did I pay for it? I think when I went, I didn't have to pay anything, but it pay might you? be different now. Did they play and, you? Oh, no, they don't pay you. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. you might want you'll be happy if they oh see somebody wrote the new letters all right hey um but yeah you you don't need them to pay you trust me the information that you're gonna get from this program yeah oh they give you a stipend now oh, all right thank they you, don't need thank to, you thank they don't need to pay you though don't Man. do that don't do that <laughs> don't do that don't do that that um I, i'm glad that you highlighted that uh for other things that are taking that have notes better or not taking notes get your pen out because that's huge there's a lot of students i know i come in contact with i'm pretty sure you have the same they're like what well, i want to go into dental school and like i don't you have no you haven't assisted you haven't you know parents like no family members you you just don't know you don't know what to do so that's why in this age with social media being so prevalent I think the students should have an upper hand because there's so many people talking about it, like your organization alone, you know? So you have opportunities to kind of look into the field and get a little more information. Uh, back in our days, I don't want to date you, Doc, I'm sorry. Back in our days, you know, we Google a little something and we go into a dental office, but we won't have the true feel of what the office could be because, you know, every dental office is different, you know? So it's super important to kind of shadow and kind of get that feel. Yeah, no, that, 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 I'm glad you filled that up. Um, so you seem like you had a lot of gusto and go-getter type of mentality. How'd you come up with that? Because I know there's some individuals out there that are timid. They're like, I don't know. How did, how did you come up with that? That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. I, I, I grew up in... I grew up in the hood, so <laughs> you gotta go get right. it. Uh, so, my, honestly, my mom she told me to kind of get out there and make it happen. And if you're in a single parent home, my mom never wanted me to be bored. She knew that I needed to be doing something. So every summer, she would make me like 
go volunteer somewhere. I remember volunteering at the VA hospital uh, in the ninth grade. That was actually a really cool experience. I was able to see like what a pharmacy tech would do. I was always interested in the health field. Never knew what I was going to do, but always interested. So uh, I helped out in the pharmacy department. Um, I got to see the orderlies moving things around. And I even got some of my homeboys to come out there. They had no interest in the health field, but I told them that they were giving us like vouchers for Burger King and uh, lunch. And then I got like three of my homeboys to come join and it made it fun. And so yeah. I probably even inspired some of them to kind of, you know, go look into the health field as a possibility. Man, so you just lighting a flyer, lighting a flyer <laughs> out in Florida. All right, all right, let me ask you this. Tell tell us tell us about this um, Dr. Dennis Mitchell. Man. Tell give give us some insight on because when we're on the pre-interview, I was listening to what you were speaking about him, and I was just like, you know, man, well, people need to hear about this gentleman and how he helped um, bring it on. You touched on it earlier, but you just go. Look yeah, it. Dr. Mitchell, like to this day, this guy still doesn't know like the change that. Well, maybe he does know the change that he made in my life. Um, I actually reconnected with him a couple months ago uh, because I was doing a presentation and I was talking about him. And I was like, you know what, let me reach out. And Dr. Mitchell is one of the coolest guys you'll ever meet, uh, African-American guy. Um, he's all about diversity and inclusion at Columbia University. I think he actually just got a promotion over at Columbia. Um, now he like heads their department for that. And if any of you guys know, like Columbia, that's like an Ivy League big time school. And to see a brother out here like making moves like that, that's, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Um, but super humble, amazing guy. Like you can chat with him. Like I'm looking forward to the next time I'm in New York, uh, we're going to plan to meet up and have dinner and kind of catch up. But I'm just probably one of the millions of students he touched, but he plays such a huge role. And, and in the back of my mind, that's kind of what I want to have. I want to try to communicate and get to know so many students and, you know, light that fly, fire. And the student probably only communicated with me for one summer and I just changed their life, you know. So that's kind of the, the person I want to be. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm so glad that you highlighted that because oftentimes we talk about going through the process from hearing it from the college dental student and doctor but then very seldom we do we give enough praise to all the mentors that are out there because just like he's saying it, like Dr. Mitchell could have been like, I got stuff I got to do. I can't do that time. And he now, could have been home with his family. Like yeah. literally I tell my wife this all the time because we were actually dating at the time. When I finished that, I remember calling her on my little Nokia cell phone and I was like, you can't, you would not believe that I've been talking to this associate dean of Columbia University for X amount of hours. And he was trying to convince me to go into dentistry. Like, I'm just a kid from the hood. Like, this is amazing to me, you know? No, but then it, get, then, but then it just goes to show, like, it doesn't even matter where you're coming from. Like, if you just plant that seed, not expect anything from it and look where you are now. I mean, that, yep. that's huge, that's huge. I mean, you're an owner doctor, you know, you come from the hood. Uh, <laughs> and I reason I put it in parentheses, I don't want to, <laughs> I will come back to that. We'll come back. Oh my gosh, forgive. I, if anybody watches this, I hate certain words such as minorities. I hate certain things because it's like it was these things weren't done. I mean, this wasn't something that just happened. Like this right. was there, there's there's systemic things in in place. And so for all those that are watching, when you, I, be careful what you Preach. classify. It's be Sunday. You classify. <laughs> Well, <laughs> be careful what you classify yourself because that, I mean, you will literally create an environment that your body, your brain will literally create an environment that your body's slave to. So be careful, be careful what you classify yourself. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that for Dr. Mitchell, because it's like, I know there are individuals just like um, Dr. Mitchell that um, poured into my life and see where we are today. So I, mean, I thank God that you're able to, um, get that because I mean I just think about how many individuals um, that are going to touch that you're going to touch just off your passion alone like and that's that I mean that's huge so I mean one day I need to meet Dr. Mitchell um, and we just talk about that um, going into the next um, aspect of it you you were talking about how you were shadowing you did you shadow just like um, one time and then you're just like aha 
I'm going in dentistry. How many times did you show? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm stubborn, bro. Like I, yeah. I have to make sure I'm making this right decision. So literally, uh, when I started out shadowing, I'll be honest with you, I probably went three times a week mm -hmm. and that's three times to the hospital in the morning, waking up to be at rounds at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. and then three times to go to the dental clinic in the afternoon. Now, mind you, I was a I, mean, I was a student uh, at FSU, so my classes started kicking my butt. So I had to kind of wind that down. And by the end of that six month uh, period, I was going at least once a week. Uh, but I already had made my decision, so I was just going because I told myself, "Give it six months. You have to make a final decision in six months." And I'm a man of my word. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And even though I knew the answer was going to be dentistry. Wow. Wow. I like it. So um, you are at Florida State, uh, Florida State University. I was going to say something else. Forgive me. You're at Florida State University. And then you decided to say, hey, I want to get into dental school. Um, mm -hmm. How did you make the determination? I thought that was pretty interesting when you told me. <laughs> so like I told you, it was SMDEP. Um, I had to have that tough conversation with my uh, guidance counselor, uh, Dr. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, um, Mrs. Anderson. She was in charge of MAP. So I had to let her know about what was going on and how I was about to switch over to dentistry. Um, and then at that point, it was trying to figure out how to, you know, apply and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, no, 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 I'm sorry. no, no, no. What schools? How'd you choose your school? Oh, and what was your oh. major? And then I want you to highlight your major. Going, going oh, right. my major? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exercise biology, physiology. Right? Yeah, biology, I, didn't do, right? I didn't do biology. I did exercise oh, chemistry, physiology. right? Not chemistry. Chemistry? <laughs> nope. Okay. Exercise physiology. Um, and that was because of Miss Anderson. Mm. Um, because she wanted again, nobody, no, no beef or anything towards anybody that's doing just biology and chemistry. Uh, but a lot of the students she saw that were uh majoring in biology, and let's say things didn't go out the way they planned end up just becoming biology teachers because they couldn't do much with their degree. And she saw it was more beneficial if you did exercise physiology because you could try to do so much more with that degree, sports medicine, um, just different avenues with physiology. And then on top of that, we were able to um, also take additional classes in anatomy and physiology in that major and kind of like broaden scope, honestly. Um, and it allows some people to go into different um, health fields. Like one of my friends, she ended up becoming like a big time, like social worker in the health field because she switched from biology to exercise physiology. Um, and she didn't go into medical school, but she definitely made an impact in like social work. But surely you had a more challenging ride having that major post of biology or chemistry or any of those, right? really we had a lot of a lot more classes okay. but I think it was for the better because we were able to see the whole gamut of the sciences and I enjoyed it at the end of the day when you spoke to me in my junior year would I say I enjoyed it when I had so many finals and I was dying no but I'm glad that I was able to do it and I actually met some really interesting people along the way so yeah the reason I would bring that up because I wanted to highlight that uh, there's a misconception that I have to do, you know. So oh. I'm glad that I'm glad that you highlighted that because that's no. Amazing. There was okay. there are people that I know. Again, like I said, I was meeting along the way different type of people. One guy, he just needed the list of the sciences that were required for. He was trying to do medical school, but his uh, major was actually business. So he took on the business aspect of things. And Florida State has a really good business school. And he ended up um, doing all the science classes. I think at the end of the day, though, because of Florida State Business School being so good, he mm -hmm. went the business route and he got a really good job in business. <laughs> That'll work. That'll work. So where'd you so, so where'd you go to dental school? Tell us where you went. How'd you get to I, that? I went to the University of Southern California, uh, which is located in beautiful Los Angeles, <laughs> California. <laughs> Um, the reason I chose that school is because USC is known for a good hand school 
And on top of that, it's down the street from Staples Center, and I'm a huge Lakers fan. Um, <laughs> I was telling Dr. Williams that when I applied, I was broke. I didn't have a lot of money. So I remember picking my schools very diligently. You made me think about this, Doc. So I've been thinking about it for like the last day. I figured out what schools I applied to. I applied to the two Florida schools at that time, um, Harry and Howard, and then New York, because I love New York. I'm a Yankees fan. Um, and then USC in California. But at the end of the day, USC was the school I wanted to go to. Um, I love to travel. So I, I mean, if my mom sees this, she's going to be mad. But I wanted to get as far away from Florida as possible because I wanted to see the world. You know, when you're young, you want to get out there and do things. And I'm so happy that I went to USC. Um, something we talked about, though, Doc, I'm sorry if I'm like jumping ahead of things, but at USC in my class, there were five people that identified as being African-American. And when I looked around the room, I saw one other black person. And then I looked, oh, myself, so that's two. And then I couldn't find the other three people that claimed to be African-American. And so <laughs> it was really interesting and a bit of a culture shock that again, I went to Florida State. So that was a PWI. Um, so it wasn't too crazy, but I was surprised though that, you know, we had this metric saying we had this many African-Americans, but there were only two in the class. And Dr. Williams, I told you the next year though, for the class under me, they end up getting like nine or 10 African-Americans that you could point out. So <laughs> they made up the next year, but that, that meant nothing to me because I was basically alone. <laughs> so let me just do the math on that. So you had, of course, it was just 100 students in your class, right? 144. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to put, point that out there. I knew that, but let me just do it. So you were at 034 seven two percent of being black in this school yeah <laughs> point three wow how did that make you feel what's going on through your head here from florida bay what? county you think you said uh-huh yeah we gotta um, we gotta make it work yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that's just my mentality though that's because again i'm a huge uh football basketball baseball kind of guy like sports and I'm a big fan of people like Kobe Bryant, Peyton Manning, Ray Lewis. Oh. All right, this is the op school that's in front of me. We got to figure out how we're going to make it work. So that's when we start flipping people. All right, this one guy was really cool. All right, you're a part of the club now. You're an honorary guy. I'm going to give you a card. Um, my lab mate, um, Dr. Williams, I told you about this. When you're in pre-clinic, we have professors that are kind of floating around, checking our work, seeing how our preps are looking. And it was a little tough to get them to come over to my station. I'll be honest with you. Um, but my lap mate, a white girl from Seattle, super cool. Shout out to Bethany. That's my girl. I love her. Um, she would actually kind of help lure them over to our area. And be, gotcha. I need you to look at my work. So, you know, you use what you got. You work with the people you have. And I, Along the way, I met some really good people, but I really wish there could have been probably a few more African-Americans in my class um, to have that bond. Because like I told you, I saw the class under me and I saw the bond that they had, you know, having each other. And I wish I had that, you know, it was just me and one other guy. Uh, <clears throat> I'm glad that you highlighted that. Um, so you're creating this community. Um, you have Ray Lewis and um, the greats in your mind propelling you, Kobe Bryant, to, you know, dominate. Um, how'd you keep such a positive attitude? It was tough. It was tough. <laughs> <laughs> it was tough, but I want to be the best, man. I want to be the best, simple and plain. I'm going to work hard. Um, if I have a goal in mind and there's something I want to do, I'm going to make it happen. Um, my wife laughs at me. Um, there are times where I just kind of write things down, but all right, we're going to figure out a way to do this. Mm -hmm. And she'll tell you, I'll find a way to make it do, I'll do what it do. Uh, but it's just the, I guess the fire that burns in me. Like I want to, I want to make certain things happen. Now I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not going to say there weren't nights I was punching the air. Like I'm sick of this. Um, but I understood the next morning I had to get up and make it do what it do. Um, I work really hard and um, I really, you know, just want to, get the best out of the world. 
it doesn't look like you were scorned or to flip the upside <laughs> down on your back and get through, right? Because I, I really, I, it, I mean, you know, not just from the stories that we hear on this on this show, but also just individuals that we come in contact with who are black, who are Hispanic, who are Native American, right? It's if you're three percent and there's systems and structures for you not to have like a, I wouldn't say easy road, but just a road in general, <laughs> just, mm-hmm. just a road, just give me a road. I don't need it. Just, I, I don't need anything extra. It would be nice, but just give me a daggone road. Like, and to hear the story is just like, it's interesting because not many people have that mentality because it's like, you know, you're jumping over the hurdles that were literally placed and made for Joshua Gold, <laughs> like mm-hmm. literally as your name, and you still have like a positive mental attitude behind it, like that has something to say. Like, so I'm just trying to dig deeper. If there's nothing there, then I get it. But you know, there's a lot of individuals. Yeah, it's a, a personal fire. I don't know who said this, but it kind of sticks to me. Um, the thing that is going to, and excuse my language, probably piss them off the most mm-hmm. is when they see you shine. So why not shine bright? just keep going like yes it's hard we know it's hard Mm -hmm. like I have so many stories like me and you even talked about a few things um but there's so many things that are honestly in our way to kind of slow us down to keep us from doing it people overlooking us people giving other people credit for things that you really did yeah I see that I see it all the time (laughs) I want to like I want to have that moment with the camera I see it but I'm going to keep working and I'm going to keep shining because I'm not doing it just for me. I'm doing it for everybody else and I'm going to keep working. So we as black people, as we continue to work together and collaborate and do more things together, we'll be able to shine together. So that's why I reach out to you guys about your organization, because I'm so proud of it and I love what you're doing. That's why I collaborate with other people, um, even though, you know, some of them may not be African-American, but build that community. Like if you look at my uh, dental office, it's all about diversity. I want to have a person for everybody. So if you roll up in my office and you speak a certain language, I want to have somebody there that speaks your language because I know how it feels to be uncomfortable and not feel like I belong in that room. So I never want anybody else to feel like that. So we're going to have to find somebody that fits you. Um, Even when patients come into my office, um, I pick assistance for them. I'll be like, oh, I see this personality. You'll be perfect for Walea. Oh, you'll be perfect for Krista. Like, I want you to talk to Kendall. Like, I'm putting you with people because I'm seeing it. It's like a little chess move here. Even though I don't play chess, my son does. I'm checkers. I (laughs) got to learn chess from my six-year-old. But it's it's thinking ahead being trying to figure out the moves just like doc when we were in dental school all right they won't come over to our area to grade our work all right i'm gonna get something to get somebody to get you over here to grade my work so Mm -hmm. figuring it out and yes trying to keep that positive attitude because at the end of the day when they do see us they might feel that okay we don't want to be near the angry black man. And so that's not going to get us nowhere. So all right, flip it on his head. Let me shine and have fun and enjoy myself. And who doesn't want to be at a good time? When you come to my office, it's a vibe. We have music playing. We have a lot of good stuff going, but we're about our business. We're going to make things happen and we're going to get things done, but we're going to ensure we shine and have a good time. Mm, I like it. I like it. I like it. So I like the fact that you have that community aspect of it. And then you also had um, just thinking ahead, that, that's huge. Um, when you said choosing specific assistants to work with that, that the next level, man, the next level, the next level, next level. So you successfully, um, you successfully completed um, dental school residency. Tell us about that experience and why'd you do it? So, all right. So we were already on the West Coast and I knew ultimately um, me and my wife wanted to settle down, have kids and be near family. So we need to get back to the East Coast. My wife is also a huge fan of the city of New York. And so one of my mentors at USC was really close with another uh, amazing person, Dr. Nadine Newsom, who is the program director at Montefiore. And so she told me one time, uh, one summer to just go visit her and talk to her. 
And I fell in love with this lady. She was so amazing. Another person that poured into me. And she told me, you know, if you ever think about doing a residency, look at Montefiore because we clicked. And I told her, all right, well, that's my gateway back to the East Coast. And I did the program. I learned so much. I remember going in on Saturdays, which was not required, to learn how to do um, implant restorations from one of the great professors, Dr. Dyer. Um, not African-American, but super cool guy. Um, but, you know, there's so many great people you can learn from. And sometimes you just have to go that extra mile. And so we did that. And on top of that, New York Yankees, we were in the Bronx, not too far from the stadium. So I did catch a couple of games and I needed to take the test to get back to Florida, took that test and then moved back to South Florida. All right. So you got the mama mentality. <laughs> All day. <laughs> All day. Yeah. Uh, Bethany helping, um, getting you taken care of. So one thing that you highlighted, and I kind of want to come back to this um, just a little bit. You said that there was a difference just going into dental school. And you also said that it's not just going into dental school, but being Black. Being, being Black. Male, being a male. <laughs> and then also being in dental school. Yep. And then you all, and I want you to um, bring this out again, because you said this, and I actually took notes on it. You said, some people have no clue what they're asking for. You remember that? Yes. Yeah, touch on that. I'll elaborate on that. All right. So everybody who's on the call or everybody who's going to watch this call in the future, um, a lot of you are pre-dental pre students. You don't know what you're asking for right now. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, the pain, the money that you're going to spend, you don't know what you're asking for truly. Um, if you have a family member that's in dentistry, maybe you have a little inkling of what you're asking for, but there's a lot that goes into this. I didn't know what I was asking for. I honestly didn't know how much money I was going to have to spend just to get an interview or just to, you know, even think about doing dental school. So just enjoy the ride. Do the things that they ask you to do, but enjoy the ride and be prepared for, you know, some nights are going to be sleepless. Sleep, sleepless. You're going to have to stay up late to study for a test. You're going to have a quiz in the morning, a test in the afternoon, and then a comp exam on a patient at late night. And it's all a sense of, I hate to say it, kind of like hazing, but it's to prepare you for the real world because once you get to the other side and you're seeing patients and now these people are actually paying you to do a service, you're going to go through some more headaches. So it's super important for you to actually learn the material and study hard and be prepared for what's going to come your way. Um, I was telling Dr. Williams, I remember it was uh, one of my pedo rotations. I think I was in my junior or senior year. And there was a student who sat in my area and I knew he had answers to the test because he had an older sibling that went through the program already. So he already had old tests. So he knew what to look for. And I remember him kind of gloating that he got like a hundred percent on this. Let me, pause, let me, let me, let me oh. pause you. Let me, let me, let me just, cause most people don't, a lot of, if you're not in, if you've not been in it or gone through it, you don't have a clue. So what happens is, is this, um, the way in which you, and here's a little gem, the way in which you ace just about any American test is to go to old exams. Mm -hmm. That's just the name of the game. Any exam that you wanna go through, get old tests, because what they're gonna do is this, they're gonna give you, <clears throat> their people are lazy, inherently lazy. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna swap, they're gonna, they're gonna mix up um, the questions. Sure. They're gonna mix up the answer choices, but the concepts are typically gonna be the same. So you, when you have these old tests um, and you study the concepts, what you're literally gonna happen is 90% of the time, those things are gonna pop back up towards you. Yep. So opposed to reading these big old thick books and trying to figure out how does this game play, you want to invest your time in getting these tests, not to just study them from, okay, number one is A, number two is B. <laughs> No, not don't like do that. that. Don't do that. Don't do that. What you want to do is study the concepts. So and then if you have number one is A, you check it, then you do that. But so this is the, this is how individuals are able to 
study smarter, right? Uh -huh. Study smarter. So it's not necessarily cheating because it's old information and you don't have the exam that the teachers just gave, but typically there'll be like exams from, I know at my school, they were coming from 80s and 70s. Yeah. And mm -hmm. even before then and so that, that information the human body doesn't change right so yeah. it's gonna be the same stuff all the way through and so if you get what we used to call it uh Meharry, the solid rock <laughs> <laughs> we called it the holy grill at usc <laughs> okay you call it the holy grill we got uh, we and we also thought we had an eagle you had an eagle that was a, that was that was an exam so that was <laughs> so, so so it was just one of those things but um but so i just want to give you all some insight on what he's referencing so old exam to prepare. So go ahead. Hey, just take it All right. So yeah. So he had the old exam and some of the questions were similar. And I guess, you know, he got a hundred out of it. But the thing is though, he didn't study it to understand the material because the next day he had a patient and he needed to treat the patient using the information that was on that test. Let me pause. I'm sorry. Let me stop. I'm sorry. Let me stop. <laughs> Um, was he in this 3% or was he in the, <laughs> what was this? I, it, maybe there was a little glitch. He wasn't in the 3%? No, he no, was, no, he was, was not. He was, he was not. He was not. He was not. No, he was, uh, he, he, I'm not going, I'm not going to say which gang he was in, but he no. was not in the 3%. Gotcha. But anyway, so he uh, didn't study to learn the material. And I saw him struggling with the patient. And I think it was something as simple as how to take x-rays on a pediatric patient, some of the things you needed to do. Um, and I watched for a while. And then he came over to me asking me for help. You know, little old me who only scored a 92 on that test, but he got 100. Like, oh, you need me. So the first thing I said out of my mouth because of the person I am, I was like, um, you got a hundred on it. You should know what you're supposed to do. And so I'm watching them struggle and sweat and I'm looking at the patient. And then that's when my heart comes in. And I'm like, I don't want to see, I don't want to have this patient struggle. I don't want this kid to be traumatized by, you know, this guy's lack of preparedness. Um, let me be the bigger person. Let me go ahead, help them out, thus helping the patient out. Um, but after I helped him out, I made sure he remembered, you, you got to learn this stuff, bro. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure you understand this stuff. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I will. You know, now his butt saved. Yeah, you'll say anything. But I'm hoping that that moment had an impact on his life as well. Like your patient was about to, you know, lose it. And you were about to lose somebody from the dental field altogether just because you were being lazy and you, you know, thought you had lucked up. Um, so you have to learn that material to actually use the material because our patients are depending on you. And so, and, yeah. And God bless your mother. Cause she raised a, 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 I don't even know if words could describe <laughs> somebody with the, the wherewithal to stay <laughs> grounded to, um, I, I, I don't know that I keep going back to it because like I said, there's not many individuals that could endure the test of time and still. Yeah. <laughs> like it, 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 it. So I, I, I'm, I'm just amazed because I know, uh, I don't know if I would have been as, as, <laughs> as kind, as kind. It was, it, it was hard. It was real hard. I'm not going to say it was easy at all, but it was hard. But I thought of the greater good, which was the patient in that moment. And that's how I see a lot of stuff. Like there's some misgivings that the world will do to us and mm -hmm. overlook and things like that. But again, I'm going to shine. I'm eventually going to do it. And when I do, you all are going to know. And you're going to be like, God darn it. Oh! <laughs> he did it with a smile on his face. Gotcha. So, but I will say this is that even though, because like some people, you know, depending on what, um, what philosophy you have? You have Martin Luther King, you have uh, um, Martin Malcolm, King, X. Malcolm X. Which one is it going to be? And so I appreciate that. But I, I really want to highlight here is just like the seeds that you sow, whatever the, the law of sowing and reaping, like whatever you plant is what you're going to get. Don't it plant onions expect to go ahead. You got to say something. Exactly. No, I like where you're going. And then this goes back to our conversation that me and you had when we uh, first met in person. Mm -hmm. Why can't I be both? Mm -hmm. Why can't I be Malcolm? Why can't mm. I be Martin? Why can't mm. I be both? Mm. You can be both. Every now and then, we're all we're not all one just one mm. thing. We all have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. 
a little bit of Cassius Clay, a little bit mm-hmm. of Mahatma Gandhi. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. why not me both? Yeah. And Muhammad Ali is another big one for me too. So, oh my God. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. I like it. I like it. I like it. So um, before we jump into the question section, um, give us some insight of being an owner doctor. You highlighted on that. Give us some insight on that. All right. So um, my office, West Sunrise Dentistry, is a a supported practice of Pacific Dental Services. Uh, Pacific Dental Services is a DSO. Um, Doc, like I told you, a lot of people sometimes hear the word DSO and go, oh, I don't know. And that's because some DSOs have probably done some people wrong in the past, just like there have been some private practices that have done people wrong in the past. So it's like with PDS, what I love about them is the fact that they have a mission. They want to help the community. They do this one thing called Serve Day uh, once a year where we give back to our community. Um, on my Instagram at The Golden Dentist, you'll see some of the images uh, that I've done over the years where like, I work with the uh, VA, which is not too far from my office. I've worked with uh, patients that were truly in need and didn't have the funds. Um, Also, uh, Special Olympics. I like stuff like that. I think we need to all give back more. I'm not saying be crazy and just throw money at people, but giving back, whether it's giving time, giving advice. Um, that's why I do stuff like this. You know, I might be just talking, but I never know who I'm going to touch. And I'm hoping that one day I'm going to make that change like Dr. Mitchell did for me and help somebody. So um, giving back is super huge. Um, Again, at my office, which is supported by PDS, uh, we have modern technology. So my office has a CDCT machine. That's a cone beam scan. Mm -hmm. Um, We have a CEREC machine. We have an iTero. Um, Funny story about that iTero. I had to fight to get that because not most PDS offices have that. (laughs) Um, But it's just trying to be at the cutting edge of technology and having them support the office is awesome because they also help with, again, things that we don't know about when we're trying to get into dentistry, like uh, insurance claim, HR, all that back end stuff, dirty stuff that they don't talk about uh, in dental school. Um, it's good to have that organization help support me in those areas, which allows me to do more things like this and do more dentistry. So, you know, shout out to PDS for the good that you guys are doing in the community. So, yeah, that's yeah, my life. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I Very seldom do you hear a good story about a DSO. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. Name? <laughs> no, they're not paying me. I'm not, that, I'm not sponsored by it. I, I laugh because when I actually started practicing, um, I worked for a, a private practice and they weren't ready for an associate. Um, this guy probably was expecting me to be like, you know, up and running and, you know, to his level. And he didn't know he needed to kind of nurture me and help me. And so kind of put me in a situation where I was an island amongst myself and I'm like hey you know I need help I would kind of go to him and he didn't really get it like we've reconciled over the years and I could say this to his face and he knows it but at that point in time he just wasn't ready for an associate but on the other hand what PDS does they're driven to have associates you know that they are super prepared from it from uh something they call the perfect patient experience where they literally coach these young docs to learn how to speak to patients also um, they do something called ice which is introduction to clinical excellence that's what sold me they literally flew me out to irvine california to you know, learn all these different things from Sereg to uh, patient management and all of this stuff, and it was I didn't pay a thing. Come to find out, the office did, but that's another story for another day. I was the owner at that point, but you know, just the fact that they have programs like that set up for young docs that helps propel them, thus allowing them to ramp up quicker. And if you are able to kind of go through that first year or two of dentistry and you have somebody, you know, slightly kind of holding your hand if needed, that's a good thing. You know, it's good to have that person in the background. Um, I think where a lot of people are a little 
uh, shaking with DSOs is once you ramp up, you don't want them talking to you. You just want to do your dentistry. Mm -hmm. And then now that's when the ego comes out. And a lot of docs forget how they were that those first two years. And now they're in year seven or 10. And they're like, no, you can't tell me how to do my dentistry. It's like, well, no, no, they weren't telling you. They were just communicating and telling you, hey, according to these stats, your patient looks like this. But I'm not going to get into the whole soapbox thing. Dentistry is dentistry to you. If you feel like you need to practice in a private practice, more power to you. If you want to partner with a DSO, don't feel shamed that you're partnering with a DSO because a lot of people out here are shaming some docs for partnering with DSOs because in dental school, and I'll speak for USC, if you said, oh yeah, I'm thinking about DSO, these old school docs who were like in their 80s, they're put their nose up, no way, you know, because the world was different back when they came out. As the world starts to evolve, that's why you're seeing these TSOs become a little bit more prevalent because the model is changing overall. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely say, you know, you definitely, I, I want to say it's potentially that you got that from doing so much research and earlier on the shadowing, the programs, uh, yep. meeting in contact with different individuals and mentors that you um, highlighted earlier. And just to be able to stand on your own too, because you know when I was coming out, I was just like DSO, Ugh. but it, like <laughs> but you're right, it really just depends on where where the individual is and what support they need in order to be successful. Exactly, and you probably don't even know in your schooling they probably programmed that in you DSO, Ugh. but you didn't truly know the DSO. But again, there might be some DSOs that could have done something to somebody, just like I could go and say, you know, oh, private practice, oh, they couldn't handle it. But I know better because of, like you said, the shadowing that I've done, it was just that particular situation didn't work out. So you can't blame one situation with another DSO and label all the DSOs. So it sounds like you're saying just get out there and get some experience exposure in that one. Uh... Get some exposure. Um, if anybody ever wants to come, like I had a student at my office yesterday um, and he was like, oh my God, I can't believe that this office is a part of a DSO. I would never think that. And I was like, well, you got to change what you think of DSOs. Um, with West Sunrise Dentistry, West Sunrise Dentistry stands on its own. It's like a, you could think of it as a franchise. I don't know if you ever remember like uh, Quiznos or Subway, mm -hmm. you know how each of them are their own individual franchise. Yeah. So when you go to the one on the north side and oh my God, it's so nice and the sandwich is perfect. They get my sandwich toasted perfectly. And then you go to the south side one and all of a sudden nobody wants to talk to you. Yeah. It's like, I can't get service. Why do meat always taste like this? You know, mm -hmm. different owners, different people. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, that, that that's huge. Uh, there's a lot of gems that you just dropped, and there's a lot of gems. I'm also looking in the um, Facebook chat. Um, Dr. Hayes says, you know, DSO leverage and resources are extremely helpful for business necessities. So, yeah, that's that, that, that that's really big. You know, we're about to um, close this thing out. I want you to think of something to um, drop a gem for the for the students. So I know this is going to be pretty easy for you. Um, but you know, I'm I'm really appreciative that you took that you started to wake up at this time, specifically this time, and share this information because like I've been able to learn something. And you know, just being able to hear the story twice and then hear that different state, different times, and seeing how everything plays a part. Like I really appreciate you and what you're doing. And I want to say thank your wife. I want to say this again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Golden, for, for allowing your husband to come on and give some insight. I want to I want to throw that out there. Because this this show wouldn't be made possible without her. Without her. <laughs> She's holding the kids right now down. I think I saw somebody trying to grab on the doorknob and she got them back. Yeah. So, you know, without my wife, I am nothing. So shout out to Mrs. Latasha Golden. That is my heart. That's my babe. She makes things possible when it looks like there is no way. And she keeps me humble and grounded as well. And you know, you know, I want to say she's probably the one that kept that smile on you that whole entire time. Because y'all been together for a little time, right? About yeah. So me and my wife have known each other since preschool. Um, but we didn't start dating until um, Florida State. 
So yeah, she's seen me go through this entire process and she's been by my side. Uh, she went to dental school with me. So <laughs> she, she, she probably could tell you guys a little bit about an MOD or if a patient might need some uh, RCT treatment, you know, I try to teach her a little something. <laughs> that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. We're about to close this thing out, but before I let you guys go, I, have an, um, I just wanted to bring this up on November 1st in Scottsdale, Arizona. Diversity and Dentistry is having our first youth summit. All right, that's Monday, November 1st, 2021 at the Spear Education Center in Scottsdale, Arizona. This is gonna be for- <laughs> <laughs> This is gonna be for all our Black, Latinx, and Native American students grades eight to 12 um, go to our website or DM us on social media, Diversity and Dentistry for more info. Um, we are taking donations and we are to provide white coats, typodonts, and tooth electric toothbrushes for our mentees. So that's not just for you, Dr. Gold. That's just not for you. So I'm not throwing you on the spot, but if you want to, <laughs> whatever you so choose. I, I, um, I, I must. I I'll make it happen. I'm gonna go. Let me talk to the boss about things, and we'll see what we can hey, come man, up with. Run it to the boss. <laughs> run, run it to the boss. I know good and well I'm not doing a thing unless the CEO checks off our mind. <laughs> so, happy life, happy wife, man. Seriously, that's it. that's it. But we just want to repeat that one more time. But Diverse Industries having our first youth summit November first, um, 2021 at Spear in Scottsdale, Arizona. That's going to be for any Black, Latina, and Latino and his uh, Native American students ranging from the ages of eight to 12. And so we just wanted to let you guys know if you know anybody that's gonna be in that area, or if you wanted to sponsor any students in that area, please let us know. You can reach us at the Diversity and Dentistry. You could DM us or um, email us, and we would um, love to receive your donations and also your support and guidance as we are in volunteer. Um, hours to as we go and prepare for this time. So I just want to say thank you. And also, I'm pretty sure Dr. Heichel is going to be um, going to be um, using these uh, nice, wonderful pins that you have here of our logo um, to also raise funds as well. But we just want to say uh, thank you, Dr. Golden, for this time. And um, it, I learned a lot. I know there's a lot of students that were able to take a lot of good notes. Like I said, there was a, um, different doctors in the um, in the chats that were able to corroborate your story and understand like, yo, this is super important. So before we get out of here, if you could close us out with some wonderful words and then I'll, um, let us dismiss us from this topic. Awesome. Yay. All right, guys. So I'm gonna lead us with this one. Um, feel free to follow me on Instagram at the golden dentist. Um, I answer my DMS all the time and yes, it truly is me answering the DMS. Um, I'm here to help. I'm here to uh, guide as much as possible. I'll help you as much as you want or as little as you want, um, but feel free to reach out if you need the help. Um, and the thing that I want to say is don't be afraid to be yourself. A lot of us are trying to fit a certain mold or what we see um, I've been watching this Muhammad Ali special. It was actually on PBS. It was a four part special, two hours each episode. And I finally made it through. And he said he, he felt free to be himself. When he's himself, he was able to be the greatest. And he would yell, I am the greatest all the time, even before he knew he was the greatest. And so that was his way of hyping himself up. So if you need to do that, say little mantras, you know, do what you need to do to get through these tough times because tough times don't last, tough people do. And on that note, thank you so much for having me and please reach out if you need me. Thank you. Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our accountability call for October 10th, 2021. And we just want to let you know from diversity and dentistry, if Dr. Golden, if Dr. Um, Haisha, myself, and all those that are coming together to make this initiative a great one, if we can diversify dentistry, so can you. Y'all make it a great one and have a fantastic day. Take care.